It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a couple of couple of days, couple of weeks. I'm out of practice, but I'm also weirdly on time. I'm in practice now. You know, you know what I mean? Where it's like you don't do something for for quite a bit, and then suddenly you come back and you're just like, every problem is gone. Such as three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the b and stream today on this fine 8th of April 2024. I got the date right this time. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and will or or two weeks because it's been two weeks since the last stream and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, my two weeks have been pretty good. I took a, a week off just to chill with the family around Easter time, you know, celebrate the time a bit and get very hungover on chocolate and other kinds of things like that. Um, but no, yeah, it was, it was good. Also, we had some crazy, I, know, I always love doing weather talk, how boring is that? But we had some insane, like we got like 50 mils of rain in a single day in the, in the Sydney area on Friday. So we copped a fair amount of rain. <laughs> Uh, knocked out power and stuff, so yeah, if you had anything to do on April 4th, April 5th, yeah, good luck. But, uh, no, we're here today, we're here all good. Let's jump right into today's game, shall we? Shall we? Take me like a hot moment, because it's a... <laughs> I'm using RetroArch, so it's like, I gotta jump ship, here we go. Where's my game audio? Hold on. Yeah, where is the game audio? No, I mean, I know there's no music right now, but I'm just like, I'm curious that I don't have it separately mapped right now. Do I have it on the 16 by nine? I don't. Where is it? Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break key by, by pulling up my, ah, uh, it was off. <laughs> by bre breaking my overlay for a hot second um <laughs> the, the the underlying audio capture was off for some reason very very odd uh we are playing dragon warrior one and two but uh we've already done dragon warrior one that's right two for one on the cartridge it's pinned two and a half years let's dive in finally dragon warrior two or known by its uh probably better well better known name Dragon Quest 2, uh, Luminaries of the Legendary Line is the subtitle I think they've, uh, appended on. Uh, I love the alliteration there. Um, Dragon Quest 2 is, uh, probably the unanimous least favorite Dragon Quest game. And it's not necessarily because it's bad, but the original NES release was plagued with very, very obnoxious grinding. And ultimately, later games would do pretty much all the mechanics better. So, the charm of the short original is gone, and the charm of better games is not there yet. Dragon Quest 2 uh, does feel a little here and there, but I'm playing the Game Boy Color version. And the Game Boy Color version, like the first game, fixes quite a fair bit by, a la by giving you a bit more experience, giving you a bit more gold, adding some more items and things that you can actually use, and softening out some of the, um, some of the, uh, equipable, uh, things, I guess. We'll dive right into this one, um, but yeah, also I guess the, uh, the, the harsh news, um, from a couple of weeks ago was, uh, the passing of, uh, Akira Toriyama, who's the character artist on this, as well as many other, um, very famous things like Dragon Ball, um, and, uh, I, he will be dearly missed. His, his work is, you know, so influential and so inspirational. Oh, I gotta delete the file first. That's how you know, it's <laughs> a test save, it's okay. Um, but, uh, as, as a manga artist and, and, and I guess a, an anime artist and just a character designer and all that stuff, um, I don't, I don't think I've actually seen anyone whose art style has been emulated and tried so much by so many people, um, and especially it has that very international appeal, um, so, uh, yeah, I, you know, I hope his legacy lives on. Uh, many years ago, two and a half in particular, a young descendant of Lotto, the brave hero of legend, defeated Draco Lord, 
We gotta deal with the Game Boy's, like, shortened names. And restored light to the world. Also, this intro was from the, uh, American release. The young man took a bride and left... Blah blah blah. ...on a journey. As they traveled, he... ...dot dot dot founded several new kingdoms. This is from the American release of the NES game, and it's actually not in the very original Famicom release. These countries came to be ruled by the young man's children from one dot 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 generation to the next. I can't skip this forward. Probably because it syncs up with the music. A hundred years have passed. Man, has it been that long since I played Dragon Quest 1? Oh my gosh. Moonbrook. A kingdom southwest of Laurasia. Or Laurasia. How do I call it Laurasia? I don't know. In the castle's courtyard, the king and the young princess engage in is it that kind. Of, oh, a pleasant and peaceful chat. Okay, it's that kind. It's that kind of that kind of engagement. But then, who's shaking the walls today? Well, what happened? Guards, is no one here? There it comes. Y Your Highness, Moonbrook Castle is under attack by Hargon's army. What? Hargon dared to do this? Yes! Confound that vile Hargon. Hurry, rally our troops. Yes, right away! Oh. No! <laughs> Listen, Nana. You stay hiding right here. Don't worry about me. But, but, Father! Hurry, go! I must inform the King of Laurasia of this attack. It's like the Prime Minister. What? Monsters here? Take that! Nice. Uh oh. Take that, foul beasts! I appreciate that in a lot of media, kings are very, very strong. Unfortunately, he's not good at getting outnumbered. Yeah. Father! <laughs> Rip, by the way. Just... Oh my gosh, set the whole building on fire while you're at it. Will they make it? Oh. I must get word of this to the King of Laurasia as soon as I can. And there he goes. Oh. I'm pretty sure arson may be illegal. Just maybe. Getting there. He'll make it. He's, he's getting there. What? Look! He's wounded! What happened to you? Forget my wound. I must see your king now. I have grave news for him. That's a pun. Yeah. Alright, hey, help me hold him. Carry him quietly. We don't need to cause panic in the castle. <laughs> you just gotta watch him go. You think they need- they, they should have a wheelchair access or something, man. Again there. <laughs> it's getting there. It's almost there. There you go. He got there in the end. The wicked Hargon sent his army to take Moonbrook Castle. Hargon intends to resurrect an evil being to destroy the world. Your Highness, I beg you to stop Hargon and... <coughs> Prince Bundo, did you get that? You too have the hero Lotto's blood. 
The time has come for you to prove yourself and the legacy of Lotto. There is no time for sorrow. Come with me when you are ready. Okay, so I... <laughs> Make sure this courageous soldier gets a decent burial. Yes, your highness. Rip. Imagine just like chilling and a dead guy wanders up. Ah, um, well, he's not. He wasn't dead for a moment. Prince Bindo helps me to see you leave, but this is for our people. I won't cry. <laughs> uh, so pretty much the uh, the the premise is, you know, the world's goofed, the world's gone 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 bad, and in Kanak and Moonbrook, you'll find others who are descendants of. Lotto or Erdrick if you know other Dragon Quest games because I had to condense it for a <laughs> Game Boy I guess. Uh, this chest contains 50 gold and a copper coin. Cop, cop coin? Copper sword. This copper sword allows us to equip it, get a bit of extra damage because you're going to be very stuffed if you don't have your sword equipped. Um, also kind of nice, uh, it, we can explore around the castle just a teeny bit as well. Um, but you're probably not going to see anything too fancy over here, because it's like, where's the key? Um, it's sort of a lot of, like, the first game where it's like, okay, we're going to need a key, and we're going to need to get some of the stuff. But, uh, I guess the big new feature, or really the big thing that sets Dragon Quest 2 apart from Dragon Quest 1, is, uh, that Dragon Quest 2 has a party. So the whole point of the game is, we go find the party, and then we gang together and try to beat the big bad. Um, it's not, it's not too long of a game, just like the first one. Um, but it is, it is a bit longer, and, uh, it, legit, I haven't played it in, like, six or seven years, so, I'm probably, and I haven't played the Game Boy Color version, so I'm probably going to be underestimating how much grinding is needed? I don't know. Stepping into a traveler's gate instantly carries you far away. This one leads to an island. Woo! Ah. <laughs> and away we go to a brand new adventure. This is actually, you, you're not, well, you can go this way, but you'll immediately see. I mean, yeah, it, it was right. It led to an island. Oh my gosh. Okay, good. The, the enemies are very basic. Uh, these are giant slugs, they don't hit too hard. Also, if there's one thing that Dragon Quest is always, you know, amazing for, it's great battle music. Even if it is the battle music you're gonna hear for pretty much the whole game. Just, it's very, it's very funky, very just... It's got its bits, goes up and down, and... It's a bit of a groove, I like it. Uh, obviously the slimes are very basic enemies as well, there's really nothing to be afraid of for the slimes. Um, but the, the... Most of the enemies in this game are actually different from the first game, but... If you've never played this Dragon Quest, or even the first one, uh, you'll probably notice a lot of these enemies are reoccurring in later games. Thank you very loud car. Thank you very loud car. Um... So, you'll, you'll definitely see these, uh, these enemies show up in later games, um... The character, the enemy models are just, you know, they're iconic. They're great, so I love it. Other than that, we don't really have too much to look at because everything's pretty much walled, walled off. This is Laurasia Castle. Thank you. Uh, and you can rest up at an inn if you want to, you know, heal up. There's also a little tiny shop here. Welcome to my item shop. How can I help you? Uh, we don't have a ton of money, uh, but you can buy some herbs if you need it, which uh, maybe it's good to just have one. You never know, you might get caught out. Um... Ants, though, probably don't need it yet. Uh, also, uh, they sell a leather shield, apparently. I think the NES version did not have the leather shield here. Um... It doesn't really mean a ton, because it's like, do you really need the leather shield this... like, before the first town? Arf, arf, arf. But, uh, just like the first game, we sort of, you know, step out and... and I'm gonna, you know, save the game. Wait, no, that's a, that's a full, that's a full exit, whoops. Not the full exit. Bad blender, bad blender. Yes, yes. Whoop. Whoop. Whoops. 
Whoops. Ah. <laughs> it was defaulted to no, and then I just went like, yep. And you see what I mean? Alright. So not recording in the field log. We hit B. And oh wait, no, it's the it's the in. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Why would I think it's saving on the overworld? I'm too used to some other game then, I guess. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's it's Dragon Quest. Nothing much has particularly changed. You walk around, you fight some enemies, and we're still gonna have a, a fair bit of that going on um, in this game. There's not a lot of uh, well, not not a lot of. How do I describe it? There's still a fair bit of. Uh, you know, just naturally having to fight a ton of enemies in order to get somewhere. But, uh, yeah, no, other than, you know, it's Dragon Quest. We'll take it as it comes. Uh, we, you, I think, yep, you still got your info screen, nothing really too fancy. Um, it all hasn't particularly changed a ton since the first game, and I say that knowing for a while that I was like, well, these are this is the same, this is a package with both the first two games, so... How many quality of life features are in one but not the other, or... Probably not that many. <laughs> but the music is still a vibe, so... We're gonna fight some enemies for a little bit, because uh, we wanna just hit to level 2. You can probably get to level 3 not too bad as well, so might as well. Probably head towards the mountains, that will help speed up the enemy encounters. Um, slimes, uh, they're only one experience point. Uh, <laughs> you can get there. Um, and don't worry about, uh, <laughs> my brain is just like, oh, what if it's like Pokemon where depending on the enemies you fight, you gain different stats. Nope. Just gain a level, you're the same stats as everyone else. So don't worry about min-maxing anything, because it doesn't exist. Uh, the slimes do have two experience points. They only gave one in the first game for some, oh, sorry, in the original for some reason, but that's about it. Um, but yeah, in general, every enemy does give a bit more experience than the original NES game. Um, I think it really is just to reduce the grind. A couple of the um, a couple of the enemies have lower health, so there's things like um, uh, I think the um, the liquid bubble slimes, which are your your grinding option. They used to have like 35 health for some reason. <laughs> now it's five, which makes way more sense because they're always they should always have that little health, and they give ten times the experience. They used to give like nothing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. How's everyone's two weeks been? Um, I I feel like I missed out on uh, very very big news. Uh, to report, or big stuff happening in the week, which was, uh, last weekend, or rather the weekend, uh, leading into April, um, there was a fun vulnerability with the XZ, uh, library, uh, for, um, uh, for a lot of Linux distros will use XZ for some kind of compression, um, and, uh, the XZ library casually, uh, s the, the maintainer started to slot in little bits and pieces here and there. Um, and eventually, as of, uh, I think the 26th or the 27th, I need to figure out my dates, uh, roll out a, a, a push and a new version that pretty much, uh, enabled the whole stuff to happen, which started to open up a backdoor into your SSH daemon. Um, this meant that, uh, given his, uh, private key, uh, he'd be able to SSH into pretty much any computer that has XZ being vulnerable like this, which was very, very spooky. Very, very like, oh my goodness, that, you know, that would have affected a ton of people. Um, now, the interesting thing is that this only works for his private key, so you're not vulnerable to everyone, you're just vulnerable to this guy, and we don't know the extent of... Oh, I should probably run away before... Oh. Don't get ripped by these fellas. We good? Nope. Cool. You, you can't die. I'll give you one more chance. Uh, nice. I'm glad I walked just that little bit too far north. So, uh, classic Dragon Quest rules. You die 
uh, lose half your money. Actually, is that Dragon? Yeah, 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 the first game was like that. Also, do I have my health? Yeah. No, I've got my health. So. It will be the worst when I really need to have experience. Oh, sorry, I have money for things. But, uh, um, I'm not too fussed right now to, to die that early. Unless it was a Nuzlocke, in which case, oh. Ugh. Uh, but yeah, no, this, this, uh, this affected, um, particularly, I think what was the versions, it's like 5.6.0 and 5.6.1 were the two versions that were out. These versions were not rolled out to, um, uh, to Ubuntu yet. They were gonna be, it was actually a candidate for, uh, Ubuntu 24.4, um, which is, uh, about to be finalized, because, uh, it is April now, they need to release that pretty soon. Um, it was in some Debian, uh, streams, um, so I think just double check, like, if you've got a computer, like, double check, or a Linux computer, double check that, you know, your XZ version is not one of these vulnerable ones. Um, oh, that ground, you know that ground very well, you just have to go around it. I think it actually works either way, you can go a bit south and you'll probably go around it as well. Alright, I'm gonna have to fight this drag he had on. I mean, he probably doesn't have a ton of health, but it's just... It's just I was not... I was not willing to take the hits from the Iron Ants there. Uh, which is why I'm attacking the Drackey first. I don't think these guys have a lot of health either. No, they die in one hit. But... They hit a little harder, so... We should get a, a comfy amount of money and experience. Yeah, 7, 11, very nice. And here's the town. It's actually not that far away. Uh, so we are here in the town of, uh, Leftwin. Are you gonna say that? This is the town of Leftwin. You should rest your tired bones. Okay, sure. Welcome to my item shop. Uh, okay, so this guy's got herbs and antidotes, the same as before, but he's also got warp wings, which is very nice. This, I think, just... I don't know if the warp wing allows you to go anywhere, or if it's still just the starting village. And, uh, it's probably a bit more important in this game because the map is so much larger. Um, you also have, uh, the ability to store gold in thousands. Um, so, uh, you can, if, you, if you're afraid of dying, you can just pop your money away and you won't lose it. Um, and, uh, you can also put some items away, which is very nice, because, uh, again, limited inventory size. It's gonna hit you hard. Let's wander around a bit more. I think the sound is mostly here just as a stopgap. You hear about that? Hmm. So the room is virtual. What a disaster! Oh my gosh. I'm glad this guy moved the moment I tried chatting to him. What was he wanted? Uh, so he sells a few things, but uh, in particular, note there will be some... Uh, actually... I don't think he sells anything I can't equip. So there's that. Uh, we got the knife, which doesn't really, it's not really a ton more worth it, but the sickle, a bit more, a bit more damage there. The leather shield would be good. Um, that's just a solid amount of, you know, defense. Uh, I don't suppose you'd really want anything just yet, so... Let's keep wandering around a little bit. Rumor has it that the Prince of Laurasia is on a quest to bring Hagen to justice. Pardon? You're that prince? Oh, please, that's so silly. <laughs> what if I say yes? Oh, please! Oh, same thing. Nice. <laughs> uh... So now, okay, so, okay, there was a vulnerability. What happened? Well, pretty much, some employee from Microsoft, and I forgot his name, but you know who you are, and look up this story, because it's great. If you go west, there's a shrine. You can get across to Moonbrook from there. My dad's a soldier in Moonbrook. He's great. He's great. We got a smile upon the dress. Uh, so we got the... Yeah, this is kind of fun as well. This is, uh... Because, I mean, remember, the first game didn't have churches. You could only save at the... You know, at the starting place. But now... We can't save. We can just do the huge. Revive the toxin uncursed, but no saving. Can't do that. I guess we gotta talk to the king, so... Done. 
Welcome to our inn. It's six gold a night. Will you stay? It's a little bit more expensive than the previous inn, but eh, it's not that bad. It's a one slime. Poison weakens you as you walk. It can be cured with an antidote. Okay, cool. So I guess we're gonna get some experience and we're gonna get some money, because I'm gonna need to buy a shield and uh, we'll see if I can buy the chain sickle. We'll see. You could also uh, buy some of these items a little ahead of time for a hypothetical party member that you may be getting. But I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, so yeah, so some employee from Microsoft I, I'm not even joking, just went, hum, when I'm trying to SSH into things, it takes half a second longer. And he felt that, he just instinctively spotted his SSH connections were taking a little longer. So he decided to profile it. He pulled out, you know, his profiler, went, went to town, and spotted exactly what was going on and said, hmm, I'm raising this, this looks a little weird. And uh, people checked back and it turns out, yes, the XZ library maintainer uh, was casually slotting in these very cheeky test files that, when they all pieced together, formed pretty much the the means to open up your SSH daemon uh, to other people. And, uh, yeah, they were like, hmm, what's going on there? So, uh, everyone instinctively just went, I'm rolling back. So, new versions, it's like 5.6.1, actually 5.4 points on this, this version's like that, so, um... As long as you're not accidentally updating into 5.6.1, should pretty much be fine. But, very, very, very curious story, because nearly every Linux computer uses XZ to some degree. Uh, it may not be installed by default, you know, you may, you may need to opt into it. Um, but quite a bunch of distros do have it, and certainly a lot of other programs will maybe depend on it. So it's just like, yeah, you know, it just... That's a, that's a real crafty thing. Um, the GitHub repo has uh, been completely nuked from Orbit, so... Uh, you can probably find mirrors of, you know, all the things that were going on, but, uh... The actual XZ repo is just on a hard... Uh, also, Rat Gaming! We got the rat! I love the rat. As long as it doesn't kick my butt. Good old 20 or so health, so it's not too bad. How much health does the does the, the wild mouse have? I think it's 10, so here we go, level 4. And <laughs> I'm still not getting very much stuff. Um, here's a fun thing as well, since we have a party system, this actually does mean that uh, the characters have different abilities. We'll dive into it more as we get the other characters, we'll probably get the first one this stream. Um, but, uh, the main character, um, doesn't actually have any spells. He is completely spell-free. The, the Prince of Maidenhall, as, uh, as, uh, you'll see his name. What does he get, though? Well, he's an absolute, you know, beast with the sword. He is your damage dealer. He's gonna slap people and they're gonna not like that, so... I should probably duck off to the town and buy another, buy another thing. But at least I'm starting to like one hit these uh these drackies, so uh, at least saves my saves my hide a little bit. Now, curiously, with the XZ thing as well, um, there exists a Go wrapper for XZ. It hasn't been updated for quite a bit. Can I run? There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, it hadn't been updated for quite a bit, but suddenly, uh, and, I'm, and I'm calling this out, an employee from one password, uh, or at least supposedly, but, you know, the, the backing seems to be there, uh, casually issued a, a pull request to update the Go Wrapper uh, library to use XZ 4.6.1, aka, or 5.6.1, aka the, the vulnerable version. And the guy maintaining the repo looked at that, Thought it was okay at first, and then just saw the news the day later, and was like, hmm, hmm, something's up. 
But now we get the Ledoo. Ledoo. We can buy another... Another herb. There we go. Herb? Certainly. No. Herb? Uh, so, that never got merged into that Golang repo, but, um... It's curious that there were two pushes? I, we don't have a, a real great explanation. This one is mostly just very curious and coincidental timing. It seems very odd to just suddenly want to update the, you know, someone else's repo. And it just so happens to have a vulnerability in it. Like, like a very recently enabled vulnerability. There's... There's weird stuff going on there, so keep an eye out. Uh, I don't think this really should reflect... I don't know, maybe, maybe... Hopefully it shouldn't reflect one password as a company. Um, I'm not sure if there's been a statement, and it's also like, I don't know, it's just one of the employees just doing a weird pull request and it never happened, so... No harm yet. Um, and to be, to be honest as well, I don't think there was any impact yet. I don't think anyone actually knew if they were ever exploited by this. Because I feel like a lot of people should have, like, SSH logging. So you should be able to know if someone is just able to connect in. Now, if maybe, you know, it circumvents your logging, okay, well, sure. <laughs> but I don't know if it does. I don't think it does. Monsters! Um, but definitely the original, you know, open source guy, uh, pretty much <laughs> a lot of people going, man, I swear he was doing, like, amazing stuff for the past, like, few years. And then suddenly just this, like, he's just been casually slotting this in. Uh, what is the explanation? Well, we don't, we really don't know, because, you know, he's just been doing it. The, the street, I guess the street explanation is if you're trying to target someone, if you're trying to extort someone for, for stuff, you probably want to be very focused on how widely you deploy an exploit. Um, because, you know, in this case, some random Microsoft employee can detect that his SSH is half a second slower. Um, so if your goal is to target one guy, you don't want to get some random Microsoft guy who knows what he's talking about to just casually spot it. Now, if this was a state actor who totally wanted to spy on literally everyone, then yeah, yeah, that's, this is sort of how it's done. Um, you, you casually let things in, you, you know, people don't, hopefully don't spot it, and suddenly, you know, vulnerability for everyone running, you know, various Linux versions. And possibly the, the best part is if you manage to get it past a lot of people, it's harder to know that it was the actual problem months down the line, years down the line. If this half second was always there for a year, this guy wouldn't have noticed that his SSH was slower, because it's always been that slow. Uh, someone someday will probably profile it and then go, oh, what's going on there? But for the most part, you know, the, the reason why this guy detected it was because that change went in. And uh, I think it goes to show that, you know, one, the open source community is very good at picking up this kind of stuff. Like, I know, yes, it technically did happen, but it's also like, man, you know, like, it's better to detect it now than in, like, months' time. Like, that's right when this, you know, this update was provided, and this guy's using the bleeding edge, and he was just like, oh, very odd. Um... I'm not really getting a ton of money to, like, buy that chain circle, am I? Because I don't think you can particularly get anything... I don't think there is anything of use in the next town. Or anything better in the next town. And also, just just a head note as well, like... Uh, later RPGs, and especially Dragon Quest, will spoil you with lots of items. This game has not a lot of items. Uh, like, when we're talking about swords, or, or weapons in general, I'm gonna do a count. One, two, three, four, five, six... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, according to Strategy Wiki. Thank you, Strategy Wiki, for reminding me how the game is so I can 
keep going with it. But uh, the 16 in there, the chain sickle is already number five because they've sort. There's starting weapons that are, you know, in the mix. Um, when it comes to other kinds of, you know, armor or shields, there's five shields in the game. There's three helmets. We are wearing one of them. Actually, are we wearing one? I don't think we are wearing one. Nope. No helmet. <laughs> the medicinal herb and the, uh, and the, um, the warp wing and the antidote. That's three of the five items in the game. That's right, there's no torches in the game as well. I don't have torches anymore. Well, there's some other key items and stuff like that, so there's a lot of that. Actually, oh, maybe other items. Yeah, I think there actually are other, other items. Oh, apparently we do actually have stat seeds, like from later games, but they're not, it's not in the original NES game, so... Okay, curious, curious. Okay. How much money we're at? We're not at 330. Oh, no, 125. This is, this is abysmal. There's gotta be a better place to fight, right? Because, I mean, here's my problem. Um... The castle's just there. Like... <laughs> like, we might as well just go in, have a check, have a look-see. Welcome to Kanek! Oh, thank you. He sells items as well. What does he sell? That's right. Uh, the most, for the most part. He's got repellents as well, so if you want to not fight weak enemies, well, there you go, but you're probably going to be fighting for experience the whole game. Let's give this place a bit of a check, though. Hi there, how you doing? Oh, when the bloodlines of Ludo unite, evil will fall. Very nice. Oh, hi there. You can talk to prisoners through their cell bars. Thank you. Kid, listen up. This is important. Get hold of the silver key. That key will open any door that has a silver-colored frame around it. Okay. Alright. Okay, he's, he's standing too far away. I can't talk to him. We got another church. Also, the original NES game uh, in in uh, America had uh, a lot of a lot of religious symbolism sort of removed, and it's been restored as part of the, uh, the Game Boy Color version. This is Prince Art's sister's chamber. You shouldn't be here. I'm going in. Where for art thou? Who are you, my brother's friend? Yes. I better tell you about him. My big brother is easygoing. He doesn't like to hurry at all. I bet he's making side trips. If I say no. Oh, I know. You want to sell me something, but I'm not going to buy. <laughs> okay, sure. Sure, okay. Hello. Welcome to Canic Castle. Please, the king will see you now. Oh. Okay. Ah, Prince Bundo. Welcome. My son Art has already departed. He should be at the Hero's Spring. Go after Art and join him. For Bundo. And then he gives you all this shaboodle. And let's you say. At least that's nice. I'm kind of curious that there's nothing really, you know, here. But at least we can chase him in the, uh, you know, at the spring. So, at least we got a bit of an objective to where you need to go. We got a wizard over there. It's a weirdly shaped castle, like, it's got a side entrance. You know, there's no actual, like, front entrance going on here. You got an inn. Oh, the sun ups on me, man. That's double the rate to sleep. Seriously, we got a great economy over in, you know, Maidenhall. Hi there, wizard. I heard the prince here can cast spells, but he's a bit frail. I heard he can't equip very heavy weapons or armor. So that's your trade-off. The, the, um, the prince of Maidenhall will, uh, definitely be able to, you know, wield all these cool weapons and stuff, but, uh, Prince of Canic, not so much. He's not a very wieldy guy. Got this one guy chilling there. I'm a traveling merchant. This seems to be a good place for me to conduct my business. 
Ah, an item shop. Do you sell anything weird? It's got the sickle, and it's got the chainmail, so nothing new, but at least he sells them. So, you got that at least. Oh, <laughs> trapped around trees. We might as well continue our journey and then just see if we can bail in time to you know, get the things we need. Uh, the spring is all the way over to the east, so we'll see how far I can get before I'm like, eh, I might need to grind and fight a little bit. But I mean, I've, we've seen all these enemies before. And I've got a ton more health than I did when I first left, so... Do -do 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 so yeah, good job! Good job, Microsoft guy! Good, uh, weird, weird scenario, uh, but, you know... The community spotted that, and, uh, yeah, very crafty. Also, check it out, a free herb. Very nice. Whoa. Uh, classic Dragon Quest as well. You don't get to pick the specific enemy, but you do get to pick the group. So, because there's only one of each, it doesn't really matter, but, uh, when there's, like, two slimes, it's like you just attack the slime group. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm definitely strong enough to, like, hit these enemies. I'm just curious if I'm... <laughs> I've got enough, like, fortitude to get through places. I don't think the slug is really gonna be a threat anymore, though. Ooh, the crit! Ooh! Yeah, no, that's all good. Uh, I got a secondary topic. It's not particularly gaming related. Uh, I do a, a, a weekly movie night with a mate. Um, and a, lot, and a, a theme that we usually do these movies about is about a popular zeitgeist. We're trying to understand, like, okay, what are my opinions about a movie? And what's the... Um, What's the consensus that I see on the internet and, and, and perhaps around my mates about this one movie? Uh, we sort of did an interesting film because there is no zeitgeist. Uh, the movie in this case was called uh, Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken, uh, which is a DreamWorks animated film for kids uh, from last year. Uh, it came, it, there was a trailer that dropped in March and then it released in the US in June it was on streaming in like July, and then it came out in theaters here in Australia in September, and no one saw it either time. So, uh, let's head into the spring, shall we? The spring of bravery. I am not very brave, I guess. I'll just wander around. How bad could it be? It seems that the enemy variety still hasn't changed. It's the same guy's outside as it is inside, so... Um, yeah, but this one was an interesting one because it... It, uh, it didn't make a splash! Da -da 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 -da. It's a fish pun. Um, we got a chest, though. What's this? The herb? The herbs, the sims in the city. One day, one day, it will happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this one, this one was weird because no one had watched it, and um, like a proper, like, no one watched it. I think the box office was like 40 million for a 75 million budget movie. Um, and 40 million is rather low as well for, you know, like a kid's animated movie. Um, although, there were quite a bunch of films around that time. I think the apt comparison a lot of people made was uh, Elemental, which was Disney Pixar's um, anime film around that time. Not particularly doing amazing. It, well, I think it got around like 250 million, and this is in US dollars um, in revenue. Which to me, I'm like, bro, 250 million dollars is a lot of dollars. But it's also like, man, and then you spent 70 million to make it? Like, man, 70 million dollars on a project is a lot of money. I, I, I get it. But, man, that's a lot of money. Get some money in there as well. This is a dead end though, but, uh... I got some means to at least 
can... Yeah, oh, I still can't afford the chain sickle yet. By the time I want to buy the chain sickle, I might as well just buy the next thing. Uh, we'll see. This reminds me as well, I'm still gonna play Chrono Cross. Every time I keep mentioning I'm like getting through it, I'm not really making much progress and I really need to just dive back in, just go for it. Stairs! I don't think we need the stairs just yet, do we? Keep wandering around a little bit. Uh... But yeah, Ruby Gilman was a flop, and um, I can basically chalk it up to one or to two points, um, maybe three. Uh, but the first point is no marketing. The only things that I can like, this is a perfect movie for like a McDonald's like Happy Meal toy, or just something like real simple to just like keep reminding kids that this is a movie that exists. The only promotions I saw was a like a single plushie that Walmart sold. I actually saw more listings for like people making their own Ruby Gilman things on Etsy than I saw the Walmart one. And maybe that's just because I'm not in America, I don't see Walmart ads very much, but it's also like, I couldn't even, man, I couldn't even tell. Uh, and the other one was a, um, uh, some, some yogurt, like, store. It's a chain of some kind. Is it called Mercy's? I think? The Antidote. I think it's called Mercy's. And it's just like, yeah, they had a vegan blueberry froyo. Hi there. Welcome to the Hero Spring. Let me purify your body with this water and pray for the great Lotto to guide your way. May Lotto protect this hero always. By the way, are you searching for the Prince of Kanek? Yes. You just missed him. The Prince is looking for others who have inherited Lotto's blood. He should be on the way to Laurasia Castle by now. Well done. <laughs> We've got to go all this way just to get told not to go this way. But at least he heals you, which is very nice that you can get a heal all the way out here. But the enemies aren't really any different out here, so... It just saves you a bit of effort going back, I guess. Oh, and out we go. Oh well, so, uh, but pretty much, there was, like, no word about this movie, and three months, a trailer three months before release, while I'm okay with that, it's like, you know, because I, I think you should probably announce your movies kind of closer to when they come out. I think there's some movies where, like, people forget they're even, you know, in production until it just kind of happens. It's like, oh, okay. Um, this one, though, it was like, man, one trailer, and... There may have been a second trailer, but it's like, there's, there was not enough really hyping up this movie in any way. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I just think no one saw it, mostly because of that. Uh, number two was uh, Stiff Competition. Ruby Gilman also doesn't really set itself apart very well. Um, certainly the main character of Ruby, you know, she's got a cool design, I guess. But... Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken is, is very by the book's name, I guess. Oh, hi. Have you been baptized at the Hero Spring? Yes. That's good. I'll pray for your safety, too. Thank you, man. It's just chilling here, man. It's just chilling. <laughs> so I guess we just leave and walk back. Music's great though. I love it. Classic, just like R JRPG cave. Just like wandering around. It's interesting that like I think the 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 caves were a bit more uh, labyrinthian still uh, on the NES, but uh, it's just interesting seeing like you know it, it's still a cave, but like it doesn't feel particularly overwhelming. I don't know, there's something great about the Game Boy Colors, just caves, although maybe maybe some purists will be like, ah, oh, nah, it's just not as hard. I got that, so... Uh, but yeah, I, I, number two, I think the competition was a bit stiff. I think some people definitely have more going for Elemental, 
Um, on top of that, it had prominently in the trailer, uh, it gave away the plot point that there would be a mermaid who was basically the villain. Like, mermaids suck. They're vain and they're gonna be the villains. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, that was the case. This came out a month after the Little Mermaid 2023 remake. Um, and some people even saw the trailer in the theaters when trying to watch The Little Mermaid. Uh, so I think a lot of people just sort of ignored it because it just blended in with the movie they were actually gonna see. Like, you can't tell me mermaids suck when I've gone to see a, a movie about a mermaid. Oh, probably not. Can't get away with that, can you? Now we're back in the town. Let's head to the inn to have a bit of a rest. We can actually go upstairs, can we? There we go. Oh, I could totally buy the uh the wind sickle now. Nice. Very nice. Go. I would like to buy your finest windsicle. I could buy the, the chain armor as well, but uh, I'm feeling good about the sickle. You paid for it, so equip it! Very nice, now I have no money. So now we head back into the castle, and uh, if I wander around a little bit, I'm pretty sure we'll see... No? We'll keep wandering around a little bit. Hi there, King. I might as well save. My son Arch has already departed. He should be at the Hero Spring. Oh, I, I, I went there. I think we actually have to go all the way back to the Maiden Hall. I don't think they really make it clear. Let's just head back. <laughs> the longest fetch quest in the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so... Uh, also, uh, Ruby Gimlin came out in the US the same day as uh, Indiana Jones, and I know... Uh, the demographic is a bit different, but once you start going, hmm, you know, like, if I'm gonna watch one movie, like, on that day, you know, going back to back to go and see Indiana Jones and then Ruby Gilman, I think a lot of people would probably just choose to do Indiana Jones if they were interested in both. Um, I think that hurts a little bit. Um, I don't think it's the primary reason why. But, uh, it's certainly not a, you know, I, I, I don't think really anything was stacking up well for Ruby Gilman, um, in that case. And of course, the, the classic thing of movie theaters are sort of, you know, they're really hurting. And so ticket prices have gone up, which means that people are probably less likely to go and see very particular movies. They might still be like, yeah, you know, I might go and see one or two movies a year. Uh... Is Ruby Gilman going to be one of those one or two movies? Probably not. And I think that's that's the third stack up is, uh, and and a lot of other movies are feeling the same grunt of a lot of money went into them and people are just not that willing to match it in terms of the amount of revenue. There are some movies that certainly do earn a ton. Um, I actually have a. My mate, when we were discussing this, um, he sort of said that a lot of people were probably still watching the Mario movie as well. That might have been a competitor at the time. Um, and the Mario movie certainly made a ton, and I honestly can't explain? I don't know. I, I, to me, I'm like, Illumination, Minions, not for me, but I don't know. And, and here I am, giving, trying to give Ruby Gilman a bit of a, a bit of a go, but, uh... Uh... 
Although to be fair, to be fair as well, uh, after watching Ruby Gilman, I'm like, it's borderline above average, but not particularly spectacular. It's just, it's a movie. It's not really that bad. It's not really that great in any other way. Um, so we'll do a, a mild deep dive uh, of the uh, of the, the movie, I guess. The Prince of Kanak came looking for you, Bundo. But when he heard you went to Kanak, he left to find you. Anyway, <laughs> oh my gosh, again. So I think doing this triggers being able to go back, and then you'll find him <laughs> finally. It's, it's such a such a chore. You gotta walk around constantly. Gotta pet the dog every time. Very nice. Uh, so Ruby Gilman, the movie. How does it start? Well, first of all, it starts off with a bit of a breakneck kind of pace. There was like four um, like side gags, four four cutaway gags in the first like five minutes. Uh, there's a intro sequence. Uh, voiced by- oh man, I'm too strong for the slimes now. Uh, voiced by, uh, Jane Fonda. Uh, the, the famous actress that they're gonna- They're gonna use every bit of Jane Fonda they can for this movie. Uh, who plays Ruby's grandma, but doesn't appear for another 35 minutes of the movie. Um, and, uh, she's saying something about how Krakens are not what you think they are. They are actually the sworn protectors of the ocean against all the evils. And Krakens always answer the call. It then cuts to Ruby uh, waking up to an alarm clock or her phone. Um, one of the two. I think she was actually calling, or someone was calling her. Maybe? Maybe. Um, so, okay, so that's your, that's your joke, I guess. Oh, check it out, look who's here! Oh, I'm Prince Art of Canic. Could it be? You're Prince Bindo of Laurasia! I search high and low for you. Let's join forces and fight as one. Now this is a jingle that they've kept forever. We've finally done it. We've now got the prince in our party. We can check him and he's level one. Uh, all the party members, well, both the party members that you'll get will start at level one, but uh, these characters uh, level up at different rates. So even though the prince is only level one here. Uh, actually, he does. Re actually, I think they all do require the same amount of experience to reach the max level. But in general, he'll level up that little tiny bit. Well, not faster, but him at level one or level six is actually not as bad as me as level six. It actually kind of works out a little okay. So don't feel too discouraged by him being a lower level. Uh, do feel discouraged by him having no weapons. Um, the prince. Uh, as said earlier, can't equip everything that the main character can. Um, this, uh, fortunately, is not a problem right now. I don't think there's anything that I can hold that he can't hold, which actually means I might be able to give him... Oh, I've got another... No, I've got absolutely nothing else. What did I have as my other weapon? The copper sword. Can he not equip the copper sword? He doesn't have the copper sword in this list. Oh, you know why? Because maybe he's not holding the copper sword. We gotta pass that over to him. Chuck it over. Now he can equip it. It, it really doesn't save him that much, and honestly, he could do with a shield. Can Actually, can he equip a shield? Well, let's try and buy one. This is a bit of a fun inventory shenanigans going on. Alright, let's try and sell some stuff. I do have a lot of herbs. Uh, no, I'll hold on to the herbs. I'll, I'll pass them on. Uh, but we're gonna need a uh, leather shield. And we're gonna give it to Art. I don't know if they ever used these names in a... Any other Dragon Quest media, I don't think they ever call them art. Gonna do a bit of inventory management, pass things around all the time. Uh, but yeah, no, in theory we can keep on going, but also, hey, we've got two characters. That's cool. Let's 
let's wander around a little bit. Let's give him an extra level. Just <laughs> give him a fighting chance. Because he might, you know, his health isn't too high and it's always going to be a little bit on the back foot. How much damage does he deal? Wow, wow, nothing, really. Yeah, he's going to get kind of caught out for, for a little bit. For a little bit. He'll catch up, um, not too, not too long, but, uh... But it might take him a little bit, so... <laughs> might as well wander up to the castle, because, uh... The castle is a proper, you know, checkpoint for where we need to go. We need to keep going west, basically. Because uh, our goal now is we need to find the next party member. Now there's no, like, party shenanigans, you're not having to juggle your party members in this game, it's just pretty straightforward, you've got your, your three guys, and then you're good. Anyway, so, uh, so Ruby Gilman is your fairly ordinary teenage, uh, movie character, I guess, where she's kind of awkward and nerdy. She has her group of outcast friends, who, uh, are very, you know, I guess, oppressed, because they are weird. One went to clown school, one's a gamer, and one keeps... Uh, saying the end of the world is coming, or something like that. I don't know. Um, there's also a prom coming up, which is the most important day of any high school character's life. Uh, you know, if they don't, if they don't do well at prom, life's over. Um, Ruby really wants to ask a character out whose name I don't remember at all. Um, I don't remember her friends' names either. Uh, weirdly. Ruby is said to be very good at math, multiple times, and uh, it's actually said that she is a tutor for this guy, so this guy is trying to learn math, and uh, I guess, I don't know, just break the, break the student, the, the tutor-pupil barrier, just ask your, your pupil out to the prom, what could go wrong? Also, you're a fish, but <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, anyway, so she's very awkward. Oh no, what if he says, actually, I don't think she ever, what if he says no. But there's a bit of, like, you know, you can't just ask him out, you gotta make it bombastic and fancy. So, her friend gives her a, uh, a, f a confetti cannon, and, uh, I guess in a very contrived scene, the guy accidentally gets shot with the confetti and, uh, cannon and falls into the ocean. Now, Ruby's mum says, don't go in the ocean, there's monsters in there. Uh, Ruby goes in the ocean and then, uh, blanks out for a moment, but, uh, you can tell she's become Super Saiyan Kraken or something like that, uh, for a hot second. Then she gets out of the, the water and is like, oh, what happened? And, you know, the guy is saved. She believes she saved him, and then, uh, some redhead chick called, uh, Chelsea casually goes, Hi everyone, I'm popular, and I saved this kid, and everyone loves her, all of a sudden. And, uh, the trailer <laughs> makes, makes it out that she says, Oh, I know your secret, and soon everybody will know. She never says this in the actual movie. She seems, you know, kinda, kinda of a, a friend, I guess? Kind of, like, you know, is everything alright? And she sort of panics a bit because she thinks everyone's gonna find out that she was a big kraken, uh, cause her hand's glowy. Anyway, she runs into the library and then proceeds to become big kraken, and then runs off and her mum tells her that, yes, you know, when, when you got in the water, uh, you released the kraken. They were waiting the entire movie to say that. And, uh, also, uh, her mum has a, uh, I guess, a brother who was sort of from the ocean, and I guess the idea is, when Ruby went into the ocean the first time, every single person knew that she, like, oh look, new Kraken. So, her grandma sent, uh, I guess her uncle, this would be her uncle, he's just sort of a wacky side character, he doesn't really get to do anything. Um, and, uh... He's just there for a bit. Um, anyway, Ruby's upset. And then the mum's just casually like, you need to just, you know, stay indoors and just be normal, I guess. 
And she's just like, you're keeping secrets from me. And then, uh, the, the uncle casually, you know, loose lips lets on that she has a grandma, so Ruby just jumps in the ocean and goes to see the grandma, and the grandma says that she's, um, a princess to a royal lineage, and only the royal blood, uh, can slay, um, the demon lord. Oh wait, no, sorry, that's this game. Um, <laughs> only the, the royal blood can protect the sea and become giant krakens, and only three people can be that. Check it out, the heel slime, everyone's favorite. I love him, he's so cute and happy. And art can not do any damage, oh my gosh. He's getting there though, he's getting there. Look at that strength, it rose by two. And he learned a new spell, Fire Bell. So, uh, yes, so the spells in this game as well, but only, uh, well, not the main character can equip them. The Prince of Kanak here, Art, uh, is a little more in tune with the aggressive, the offensive spells. So he actually already starts off with um, uh, heal, by the way, he's always had that on him. Um, but now he's got Fire Bowel, and he'll probably get pretty much everything else that's quite useful and rather iconic to the Dragon Quest uh, universe, which is very nice. Um, our third character is a little bit more of a healer, although it's nice to have healing on two characters. Um, the, uh, the, I believe there was one spell which, uh, which, um, I think changed from being on the, the prince to our third character. Uh, just because it made more sense to be on her. Am I going the right way? We'll just keep, keep checking, keep seeing. I think I'm going the right way. Bubbly slime, I love him. Again, so cute and so dead as well. How much health? How much uh, experience do these guys get? Oh, they give a bit. These guys start to give a bit. Like that heal slime had 15 experience. The bubble slime isn't as strong, but eight. Eight's okay. I mean, we're sort of at this point though, where it's like main character is like 400 experience, so eight doesn't seem like a, a huge number, at least yet. But check this out. We're finally. Oh, we're not there yet. Oh, we gotta watch out for the King Cobra! And I'm already poisoned. Nice. The poison is annoying. Well, not annoying in battle. It really doesn't mean anything in battle. Uh, they've got 14 health, which is a bit, but not a ton. Go, very nice. Look at that, quick level. Very nice. Uh, yeah, not really anymore. Might as well just use the use the antidote. Uh, oh my god. Mm, might as well drop the healing. We'll keep it going for a moment. There we go. So onto the cave. This is, uh, the late cave. We've got a few rooms, a few items to pick up. Oh my gosh, but we do have to deal with these guys constantly, so... Will Art be able to beat one on his own? Probably not. No. Uh, anyway, so, Ru so Ruby finds a grandma. Grandma tells her that, uh... Yeah, she's going to be a princess. Also, she has superpowers, but maybe one day she'll teach them. Not today, I guess. Uh, then Ruby gets nearly captured by a, uh, a sailor. Also, the Aggle Seed. The Aggle Seed. Uh, this is a little fun little item. Gives you a bit more uh, stats. I'm going to give this on art, just because I feel like it, it'll be very useful for him to be a bit quicker. At least for the moment. I don't think it really matters too much, like... You know, there's only so so much you can really do with this game, but, uh... Might as well. I don't think there's anything in these. Nah, they're just there. Uh-oh, it's Blue Rat! 
got to take out this healer quick. Stat. Big rat. You know, the healers haven't really been doing much healing, have they? Uh, anyway, so Ruby goes uh, back onto the surface. Her mum... Uh, oh, oh, so, okay, so she's nearly captured by a, by a pirate sailor guy who's sort of skeptic of her. Also, they pull off a joke, uh, I guess, a joke at the beginning where they, they're like, if anyone asks, we're Canadian. Like, that's just what Canadians are, apparently. The squids, I guess. This will be tons of good experience, right? Yeah, There's a bit. It's a good amount. Okay, we're starting to get to that point where uh, we might need a bit more, a bit more juice. The slot token. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna get into that later. Uh, I might go back for a rest. I know I saw, sort of wandered all the way out here, but I'm like, yeah, I don't trust quite getting all the way. Not with these big rats. These big rats are gonna, gonna ruin my day. I might as well top up with a couple of extra antidotes. Yeah, you see what I mean? Like these rats sort of they goof you up a bit. Ah, but I'm level seven. You know what that means? Uh. A tons more strength, oh my gosh, out of nowhere. Seriously, 9 strength? It's like... I had 20 in the last level, now it's like, yeah, you get a ton more. Oh, I better be- well, I- <laughs> Problem is, I can only hit one thing at a time, so... I'm stuck to doing that. Making our way downtown. Babble, babble. Uh, so she's nearly captured by the pirate guy, and the pirate uh, guy uh, fails because uh, the mermaid redhead character, who's a mermaid, we saw the trailer would gave it away. Um, oh, I can't heal the poison. Yeah, this is gonna be kind of annoying. I think we'll get back in time. He's got like two health. Oh, this would probably be a good time to, to heal, wouldn't it? There you go. <laughs> I wasn't gonna casually just let him die. Eh, nah, yeah. <laughs> nah. Uh, so, okay, so the mermaid uh, saves her, then Ruby's just like, I need to go home. Just, okay. Anyway, so then she's home. Uh, she then tries to pretend to her mum that she didn't, uh, sneak out or anything, and still kind of upset that her mum hides secrets. Okay, sure. Uh, so then, uh, she goes to school and feels like she doesn't fit in, so she talks to, uh, the, the, the mermaid chick. The mermaid chick is like, also they have a, um, uh, a... a a gender, what's the term, a gender neutral bathroom, and it threw me off because I'm like, bro, in a high school bathroom, the boys should really not be allowed in the girls' bathroom, man. That's just a weird feeling for me. I don't know. Uh, we're gonna detox because I'm probably gonna want that. Ten gold? Oh my gosh. I guess it is probably cheaper than an antidote, though, and much cheaper than a revive. I don't know, it's weird. I don't know, it's a little weird to me because I'm just like, man, the whole point of like, why. The girls get their own bathroom is because, uh, one, uh, they don't need the stand-up urinals, and two, uh, I feel like there's cases of the, the boys taking a little bit of advantage of, uh, the bathroom atmosphere. Um, I don't know, I guess in the movie it's okay. Anyway, uh, so, Chelsea is then like, you know what, we need a super fun go-out kind of day, and then they proceed to just go into the ocean and ditch school. I don't know, it's not mentioned. Ruby just does well at school all the time. Doesn't really matter, apparently. Um, didn't really make a ton of money, did I? Because now I'm going to buy like, a couple of handy dots. Uh, 
Dude, yeah, the antidotes are cheaper than just... What? The antidotes are cheaper than actually, like, getting the, the treatment. Only by two gold, but still. Come on, I'm getting ripped off by the church. Uh, so, anyway, so they go underwater. A anyway, uh, Chelsea then says uh, that, yeah, there was a war in the past um, 15 years ago. They keep mentioning 15 years as if that's a very significant, like, point. And I think that's just to say how old Ruby is. And basically, oh, uh, anything 15 years ago is because of uh, what happened in the past. I don't know. Uh, anyway, there was a big trident. And the mermaids would use it to try and kill the Krakens. And anyway, Chelsea says, Why don't we get it? Because then it will put the war at rest. And we'll be at peace. And Ruby, for some reason, just believes this. I guess. Also, she completely dismisses the grandma saying that mermaids are out there to trick you. And just casually goes, Yeah, but she's my friend. So, okay. So anyway, so they go find the, the trident. And it's like, oh. I gotta have superpowers to get through it. So there's a montage of Ruby basically working to, like, get her superpowers, like just training for them. You know, laser eyes and, uh, thick skin and, uh, the trailer had camouflage that never comes up in the movie. I don't know when that ever happened. Um, because she never disguises from anyone. I don't know. Um, the Grat. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, she's almost there, and then she gets to the end and just sees her reflection and then thinks about how hard life is, I guess, and she goes, there's one person who I need to talk to in order to get through this. I need to talk to my mum. Also, her mum's a real estate manager and is a little upset about, uh, a giant kraken being around, so... There's this, like, mild subplot about getting the pirate to think that he's killed a baby kraken. Uh, that the rest of the family engages in. It just sort of happens. It's just like... It's it's just two scenes. It's just it's just there to... Just, oh my gosh, a copper sword? Heck yeah. Uh, too bad I guess I don't need another copper sword, but... Heck yeah. Alright. Back into the dungeon we go. Now with a bit more gusto and a bit more health. King Cobra! Well, I can keep hitting him in one go. We got our, our wonderful battles. Uh, anyway, so she... Uh, she goes to her mum who's having, like, uh, an event for the... for the real estate? I don't know, it's just kind of happening. And she's like, ah, here's my friend, she's a mermaid. And then the mum flips out and she's like, what? You made friends with a mermaid? How could you? And then Ruby's like, you don't understand. This is important. This is my calling. And the mum's just, like, flipping out because she's like, what on earth has your grandma been putting in your head? And then proceeds to still not tell her the whole truth, or just be real with her. Uh, and then... Uh... Ruby gets mad and hulks out and just leaves and demolishes the building in the process. Uh, this is one of two times Ruby is a Kraken not in the water. I, I don't know if it's meant to be like a angst or a hormone, like, metaphor, but it just kind of happens. Uh, anyway, so she then gets to try and... Because the reasons just now she's okay in getting it, I don't know. And then uh, Chelsea the mermaid uh, reveals that she's actually the evil mermaid queen the whole time. And uh, Ruby is an idiot. And then Ruby punches her a bit. And the uh, grandma punches her a bit. And they're all kind of weak. And then Ruby's like, the only thing we can do is uh, use our laser eyes together on the tribe to destroy it. I know this works because I'm a mathlete. That's what she says. I, I swear that's the line. Anyway, they do it. Also, the prom is happening at the same time, so the, the, the rest... Because she's got friends, by the way, that just completely get flaked the whole movie. They keep mentioning, oh, where's Ruby? They're just setting up prom. That's all they do for, like, the 
you know, hour or half hours two and three of the movie. It's only a 90 minute movie and everyone on land is basically gone from the movie half an hour in. And it just follows this whole subplot about, man, I'm just constantly getting poisoned. I wouldn't mind uh, getting a, uh, an antidote as a drop. Oh, okay. Never mind. I got a spell for it. There's an app for that. Oh, let's not let's not do the field log. Uh, well, that was some convenient timing, wasn't it? Now, unfortunately, this dungeon is two floors. I think we're good on the room on the left, but every other room has like something. A life acorn? Now a life acorn would be very good on... <laughs> a life acorn would be very good on the main character, because he's, he's gonna want to tank stuff. Or not, it actually might be terrible, I don't know. Someone's gonna be like, oh my gosh, you're putting the items the wrong way around. Bro, I'm used to the NES version where there is no wrong way, because there, there is no stat buffs. The antidote? Okay, I don't think there's anything over there. Oh my gosh, check out this guy, the sorcerer! Ooh. But don't worry, Art's got a crit, which did actually- wow, good job Art. You did it! Uh, anyway, so they defeat the trident, the mermaid just becomes normal, but she's always evil. Uh, and I got another antidote. Very nice. I called it a, a fight too early. Um, uh, and uh, then she goes to prom and asks the boy out and he says yes, and then they dance and they get a smooch at some point. And then uh, Ruby is like, sometimes defending the ocean. They just hint at that. Um, and that's it. That's plot-wise. Uh, so I guess the main thing for the plot is uh, Really, the moment it stops involving Ruby's character and personality, I feel like that's where the movie gets a bit weaker. They don't seem to, uh, describe... Well, they have her as an Orchid character who has some strength. Uh, you know, she's good at- Oh my gosh, lots of money in there. She's got some strengths, but then she proceeds to not leverage any of that. She even says throughout the movie, you know, like, visualize the problem, like, that's her maths approach, and therefore life should be like that. Um, and she never grows out of that, because she clearly is needed in the final boss. There's some army ants as well, that's right, we're doing recol- I mean, we did recolors of the rats already. We're doing recolors! We sort of always had recolors, but it's just like, yep. They're not too bad. They do kind of hit kind of hard, so... And they don't give much money. They give less money than the regular ants as well. <laughs> More experience, less money. And look at that, the whole point of why we're here was just to get this key. That's all we needed, just to get a key. That's right, I bailed way too early. Poison again. Nice. Uh, but yeah, on top of that, uh, most of the other characters don't really do much in terms of actual like story progression. Uh, weirdly, Ruby's uncle gets a lot of screen time. He's even there in the final boss fight to give Ruby like a little bit of a pep talk, and then proceeds to just be so far away from the fight that he arrives when it ends. He's there right when the fight finishes, and he's like. Did we win? It's, it's just like that. He's just there to provide jokes, which I think is okay, but... Ruby's mom's okay, but uh, they sort of don't give her a lesson to learn. And her grandma is a warlord. They make a note of that, where like literally all she wants to do is just like train up the next like strong, you know, defender of the sea, which is okay, but it's just like... We only see one thing that, like, actually is a threat to the ocean, and it's kind of Ruby's fault that <laughs> she was manipulated into, like, going with it. Um, yeah, for a smart character, she's a bit naive there. I don't know. 
I guess she's like seeking like value in her friends and not her family, but it's not really her friends because also her actual friends get abandoned. And while we as a viewer can see it, I don't really understand why Ruby herself declined calls and just completely ignored her friends. I don't know. Also, I was expecting more on hiding the secret because the problem is that after the first half hour, she decides to just go underwater for most of the movie. She's there above land just casually because she apparently attends school and everything's mostly fine and she still didn't ask out the boy. Uh, but then she just goes under the water and tries to learn her superpowers and tries to get the trident. And I'm like, that's it. It's got nothing to do with any of the rest of the movie. She's just trying to get the trident, I guess. And then fights a big bad, which isn't particularly impactful. The music is very weird. Um, starts off okay, gets me a bit of a mid-2000s, just kind of animated movie vibe. Nothing really too amazing, but also just like, hey, you know, it's fun and a bit campy. Um, then it got a bit tropey, and then it was also like, then the music was just weirdly not fitting. There's a pop song going on in the final fight, and whatever sound effects that should be there weren't really there, so there's no big impact. And I know, pop song during the final fight is like, um, you remember Shrek 2? But, uh, the thing is that Shrek 2, it's like... It's a licensed song, and it's a, it's a pretty darn good one at that. I guess this is also a licensed song, but it's like... Holding Out for a Hero is a great song, man. It's always fun and dramatic. Also, they made it even more dramatic because it ties in with the actual things that are happening on screen. There's some themes and other kinds of uh, weird little motifs they change here and there. Big Rat. I'm just gonna keep mentioning the Big Rat. So now we do a big long trek all the way back to Maidenhall, I guess. And now we got some weaker enemies again. Actually, we could probably go to, to Leftwind first as well. Yeah, we could probably go to, to left wind first. Awesome, man, the poison! The poison is very obnoxious. At least you can heal it, like, fairly early in the game. So you're not just constantly hoarding these antidote items. But I guess the other problem is that, like, healing items, especially, start feeling very strained when all you have is that standard herb. You don't have other healing items that can help compete with the fact that you're gonna have much more health. Not a ton more health, but definitely much more than what a healing herb is gonna be useful for. Yeah, barely any experience points now. Where's... left when... There it is. Oh, almost there. Almost there. Good old crits. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I feel like I was expecting more from the characters. You could sort of see it coming a mile away. Um, on top of that, the trailer gives everything away. The, tra the trailer spends more time... It does not show Ruby's family. And it spends so much time on her gaining her superpowers and actually showing the final villain in the fight and significantly amount uh, significantly <laughs> like that much not even like ah oh, you know here's a tease it's like no like is her fighting and firing lasers out of her eyes and uh literally this is who the villain is and yeah it's just like oh my gosh uh oh okay i can't buy the chain armor i can also buy the sickle but i can't buy both so we'll go with the, uh, the sickle for the moment. And I could probably sell the sword. Or two swords, I guess, because I've got two of them now. There you go. Got the sword, I'll give you 75G. Very nice. I just got a club as well, I don't need that. Okay. 
Club. That's a bit. Alright, so now I can actually buy the, uh, the chainmail. Which, uh, I'll give that to Art, because I think he actually does need it first. And now I can sell Art's, uh, leather, leather chaps. 113, which puts me close, uh, to buying another thing for, for the, uh, for the hero. For the Prince of Maidenhall, but not yet, so. Uh, oh, and there was a, there's a thing, there's a, isn't there a, uh, thing somewhere in here, wasn't there? Yeah, up here, wasn't it? Nope. I thought it was somewhere. We'll keep looking for a moment. Nope. Is it like a secret door here? Nah. Oh, it was in the store, wasn't it? This is a fun little just... <laughs> something up here. I don't think there's been a single item that's like underneath me ever so far. And just remember the original game had like a menu where you had to say look or... There we go. So now we can open doors like that. There we go. Hi there. Want to play a slot machine? Do you want to know how it works? I don't know. Let's play the game. Oh my gosh. This is what our slot token's being used for. That was close. I give you a slot token. What? Oh my gosh. I get another one. Alright, tell me how it works. When the reels start rolling, press a button to stop them. Get three suns to get to win the jackpot. A gold card. Three stars gets you second prize. A wizard ring. We offer other prizes too. Okay, sure. Very nice. Very nice. Wow, slot token. Oh my gosh. That was close. I'll give you a slot token. I'm gonna be here forever. This is this is how gamblers get addicted. Ah. Oh. And now I don't have a slot token. So. Done. Well, we'll keep coming back. We'll have some more goes. Anything else? Yeah, if I had to say the strengths of the movie, though, I'd definitely say that, like, Ruby's character, uh, especially within the first half hour, where she does bounce across, you know, her insecurities and, uh, you know, the things that she's actually good at and, and confident in. Um, and there's a bit of, like, you know, the, the be yourself mentality that sort of shines through at the end, where, uh, like, it turns out, if you want to ask the, the boy who takes math classes, just be yourself, man. Like, he knows. Don't have to do anything weird. Um, she never ex exactly experiences... I guess... Well, I guess she does experience consequences, because she sort of ruins everything. Like, the whole movie is sort of because of her, but... Um... Yeah, it's not like... She doesn't really goof up too hard otherwise. Back in here... So now, I believe we can explore this little hidden room over here. This is the dungeon. This is no place for a prince. Hey, do you have the jail key? No. Let's just get lost. Okay. If you open this for me, I'll tell you something good in return. I don't have a jail key though, I actually don't. I guess not here. It's not this room. And definitely not down there, because we don't have that key yet. Uh... Where was it? Keep looking around a little bit. I thought, I thought there was something around here. bunch more over here, I guess. Hi there. An amulet gives protection against spells. It is supposed to reduce the risk of falling asleep or having your own spells disabled. Okay. And 
Oh, this door. I have heard about Moonbrook. The wicked Hargon is in possession of malevolent powers. He is said to curse all who threaten him. Beware of him. Okay. That gives me... that. That's very inspiring. Thank you. Uh, still no, no dice on the... Uh... Where the door is. I don't suppose it was upstairs, was it? Not at all. Well, I could probably save at the king, though. Give me the, the give me the divination. Tell me, tell me my experience. You'll be closer to the next level, so. Uh, yeah, I don't have a ton to really say about Ruby going. Uh, there's a, there's a, I mean, I, I, I basically did a plot dump. Um, the plot sort of gets worse the more I think about it. Like there is a bit of that going on, which is a bit of a shame. Um, and I do feel that like after that first half hour, you do lose really what makes the film better. I think. Um, that being said, the first half hour is good. It's not amazing, but it's definitely good. A lot of smartphones, a lot of technology usage. It's like one of the one of the friends uses like a Steam Deck and is a streamer, and also the pirate is a streamer, and also her dad is an ASMR YouTuber, and her mum has TV ads for real estate. Uh, and it's like, man, you know, tons of social media and the whole like. She's worried about, uh, people finding out she's a Kraken online, like, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's kind of weird, I, I didn't... I would have thought this guy would have said something. He's like, ah, oh, do you have the jail key? And I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, open it. Do I have to use the key in my inventory? I think it's just a... there we go. Wrong key. That's not the... I don't have the jail key. Am I missing the jail key? No, I certainly don't have it. No, this is... <laughs> Why is he baiting me like this? Oh well. Oh well. Well, we'll just keep on going, I guess. But, uh... But yeah, I think the, the most disappointing thing for Ruby Gilman is that you can sort of spot where it may have gone a bit better. Particularly... Uh, I feel like Ruby herself is the more interesting character and her dynamics around uh, kind of feeling ostracized and awkward at school. Um, maybe this whole plot point of, you know, everyone not finding out her secret of being a, you know, a fish um, may have come a bit more into play because uh, it rarely felt like it was really a problem. It seems that even when she became a giant kraken, only one person noticed who was coincidentally the, you know, the, the, the mermaid. So, just like, oh, okay. So I, I believe where we need to go is just heading south from, uh, from the castle. Which is probably not too bad. At least I think it is. Or it's south from somewhere else. I think it, it might actually be south from a uh, from uh, the other place. In which case, eh, a bit of a walk again. We'll see what's going on down here. Uh, yeah, I think as well. Um, maybe if there was some more plot points around, like kind of what's the term, um, generational stress. Where it's like, the mum worries that, you know, the grandma taught her the wrong way. So the mum tries to teach a very, very different way. And it also doesn't work for Ruby. Um, and perhaps you could have shown the, the mermaid character and her mum having a weird relationship instead of the mermaid character pretending that her mum had died. Only to then reveal that she was 
the mum and mermaids just don't age. And that's it. And it's just like, okay, throw it, throw that whole plot point out, because it uh, doesn't really mean much at that point. Hi there. Nice fire. Oh, I need a magic key in order to continue. I've been waiting for you. Dear Prince, hear me out, please. There are two kinds of keys. The silver key and the gold key. There are also two kinds of doors. First find the silver key. It supposed supposedly lies hidden away in the lake cave west of Kanek. Eh? You already got the silver key. Oh, you're impressive, my prince. Oh, cool. Okay. Y you're not gonna explain the other key. Okay. Okay. So I guess we're not going this way yet. There's another shrine, I just didn't really click in my head that it was going here, but sure, okay. Well, back up we go, all the way to where the other one is. I sort of walked past it a bit, but it probably didn't show up on screen. experience though. Um, if, if there's one thing as well, I'd say the, the movie's got some pretty bits to it, technically. Um, I think some people definitely will rip into the, the cow art style of uh, characters, and for the main characters who are meant to be like squids, I'm okay with it. For the crowds, where there's some shots where you can see the same character just copy-pasted so many times, and everyone looks like, I, a lot of people mention, it's just like, it look like the, uh, Kroger's ads, which I'm not American. But I will say Grubhub. Uh, that kind of, like, art style, and it's like, yeah, no, I, I kind of get why that turns off people. Um, it does look cheap in quite a lot of cases. Even though you can make characters look expressive. Uh, I think you can make characters look expressive and not look the same way every time, you know? There's a time and place, and, uh, I don't think a 75 million dollar movie is exactly, you know, the time. But, I did like Ruby. I think the animators looked like they had a, a fun time, um, animating her, cause, uh, she's just got, like, stretchy legs, stretchy arms, and, uh, just, I think there's like a, there's a visual gag earlier on where she like goes to like a bus, or not a bus stop, but like a, a pedestrian crossing or something waiting for the lights in, uh, amongst a crowd of people and just like squeezes in between them. And uh, then they like kind of slide apart and she's just like, got a bit of an awkward expression. But I'm like, oh, is that like a visual metaphor of like how she struggles to fit in? Is that what they're going for? Because that'd be kind of neat if that happened more than once in the movie. It sort of fails to happen after a while, so that's my problem. I found the underwater parts to be very underwhelming, because there was nothing to really look at under the water. It was very, oh my gosh, I wanted to just go here, but nope. Nope, we're not going this way either. Don't worry, there's another place. Gotta watch out for the... <laughs> the slightly weird lake. Uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's really just a, a mostly run-of-the-mill movie, and its strengths are sort of fleeting. Also, the trailer gives it away. The trailer fails to really mention a lot of the first half of the movie, um, but the trailer does give away the actual plot of the movie, and ultimately, if you really want to just watch it for the plot, uh, the trailer's done it for you. And also, you could have guessed, because... This movie sort of pieced together so many pieces from other animated movies of the past 20 years that ultimately I don't think it's really got a very... doesn't really have a, a lot of originality to it. And that's a bit scathing. I think at the end of the day I'm probably a bit scathing of it because of that. Um, but it's interesting because that zeitgeist, that effect that I'm trying to like piece together also, have you been to the shrine south of Laurasia Castle? Yes. And I have nothing to say. Oh, okay. Please go right through. I believe you're allowed to go in here once you've got the prince. So... I don't know if you need the key in order to do this, but... Sure. Uh, everyone likes a good old tunnel. 
Are we going, uh... Are we go left, or...? We'll go left for a moment to start off. Way to go. Oh. Big rats. Big rats. Um, but yeah, me latching onto some kind of zeitgeist. I don't know, I'm trying to seek like... Not, not a deeper meaning out of the movie, but definitely a... Uh, like, what's my learning? What's the actual take home? And I guess for me, like, part, part of it is like... Me and my mate were like 80% of the world's discussion about this movie. Because we kept bring- Nice. Nice. Very useful island. We kept bringing up this movie as like a weird- It's anomalously low. It's like uh, DreamWorks have never made something that flopped that hard. Since like, I think maybe Spirit Untamed. Not Untamed. The original Spirit didn't make a ton of money. But it also didn't cost anywhere near this much. Uh, this feels like- you know, the DreamWorks movie. Although they did do Trolls, and Trolls made a lot of money later as well. And I guess that's the problem is, don't release, too, don't release Ruby Gilman too late, because Trolls would have just been your bread and butter at that point. Everyone likes a good, just, Diglett Tunnel cave, you know? To be honest though, it is better than, you know, having to wind through a snaky room. Oh, the villain looks very da uh, Danny Phantom. I don't know. Does anyone get that feeling with uh, with Ruby Gilman as well? I don't know. Um, but yeah, me trying to latch on to some kind of like, what is the world's explanation for why this movie ended up being that way? Uh, and and the, the possible hopefulness that uh, it's a cult classic and waiting. Um, no, nah, it's it's not a cult classic. It's it's I don't think it's good enough for that. Too many can't one hit, but they don't do a lot of damage to him because he's got that defense. So that's all good. Eighteen experience. All right, here we are, back up onto the surface again. And we continue all the way down. We'll get there eventually. Definitely, the map is a fair bit larger than the first game. So, if there's, if there's one big take home, it's that uh, there's a lot more to explore. Um, or, mm, I should, I should, uh, <laughs> I should clarify. There's a lot more to explore in terms of the floor space, but I actually feel like the areas are a bit more spread out as well, and it just means that there's a bit more walking. Um, but I also do think it, it is a bit of a more interesting world. I don't know, you got these tunnels and other kinds of things. I do wish there was some kind of world map or something you'd see at some point. Oh, watch out, it's the armor peds. I like how I have not been using the fireball as well, because I'm just like, I want to heal. Oh. Oh. Okay, well, you're probably going to want to... You're probably going to want to heal now. These guys are probably going to kick my butt a little bit, but, you know, new area. It's got to happen at some point. They've got, a uh, 21 health. Which is a bit... It's a bit when I don't hit them too hard. Yeah, they're hitting me a bit hard there. Uh, oh, okay, let's get them with an actual fireball. Fireball? They usually get past the armor, so that's all good. That's fun. At least they give you a ton of gold. And we're right here already. Very nice. 
so welcome to, well here you go, welcome to the town of Hamlin. This is a town where people meet. That is usually what happens in towns, I guess. We can go to the end. 24 gold a night. We are starting to get scrounged out, but those enemies gave 30 gold, and there's probably a bunch of other enemies that give kind of about that much anyway, so hey, if you fight one thing, you're making money. Do you have any slot tokens? Nope. When you shop for items, they sometimes give you a slot token. Oh, very nice. Law and order is breaking down. A pickpocket got me near Kanik. Luckily for me, he was caught. He must be locked up in the castle. Wah Oh, okay. Don't become obsessed with it. Oh my gosh, okay. Other than that, I don't think there's really... Mm, I mean, we'll give it a look around. I, I don't... Again, I don't think there's, like, a particular secret going on with the town. Ooh, but there is a dog following me. Hi there. Now record your quest in the journal, right here. Very nice. We'll keep going on for a little bit. And we can do the whole church business. Very nice. I don't have a dog following me. Excuse me, are you Prince Bundo? I used to work in Laurentia Castle. It's like a dream to see you again, Prince Bundo. Thank you. You're welcome. My, my existence is uh, good enough for you. I'm gonna bring this dog around again. Who knows, we might find an owner one day. One day. I buy and sell weapons and armor. What can I do for you? Okay. What was it you wanted? So we can buy some fancy stuff now. You'll start to see some weapons that, uh... You know, the Prince of Canic can't actually equip at all, including these shields, so... He's sort of... stuffed, actually. Like, you can get the spear, it's a bit more damage, but... I think really the goal is, you want to get the steel sword, you want to start just... dishing damage. Uh, and the steel plate. Thousand gold, which pretty much doubles my defense. I think that actually would be the next thing I want to get, because... Yeah, because it's like, I'm, I'm taking a bit more damage than that guy, so... And we got an item shop, so we can buy the huge And also some weaker items if we need them, but probably not. Don't need that. Oh, and the bank. Moonbrook Castle, southwest. Go west first, then turn south. Watch for monsters. Thank you, storage service. I still don't have enough gold for a storage service. Also, is that a is that a lottery a slot machine again down here? Yes, but again, no slot tokens. So rip. Hello there, man. How you doing? I hear there's this flying cape in the tower somewhere. If you wear that cape, you can fly a bit if you jump from up high. Don't you forget what I told you. Uh, that that is actually very important. And also a weird bit of, uh, just, it happens, it's weird, it's vague, but you gotta remember that, so. Okay, so we're starting to get some kind of serious enemies going on here. Uh, let's see if we can knock the armor peat out in one go. Got the whiz Drackey out, so that's good. Uh, close. Go. At least, he's, at least he's just got that to tap him off. But yeah, you can see, like, look at that, 36 experience, 50 gold. We're gonna, we're gonna make the money. We're gonna make the money kind of quick. Maybe I can actually grind around for the money. Ah! Baboon. Should be able to take out one bad. Oh, maybe not. Oh, they're gonna hit hard. Oh. Oh, okay, get out of that. Get the heck out of that. I don't want to fight no baboons yet. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna need that, uh, that armor first. Uh, there's no party order like, uh, Final Fantasy has as well, so... Prince of Canic's just gonna take hits just as likely as anyone else. It's not his fault, but maybe he just needs some levels. Just wander around a bit, you know? Fight some ants. 
some how much how much experience ants? Four. It's a, it's a bit of a drip feed. Cause uh, what level are we at now? I'm at level eight. My buddy's level seven. Uh, yeah, this starts getting to that weird point where it's like every level uh, starts to take maybe. It, it almost feels like it's doubling. Like it takes double the amount of um, experience to level up. It sort of balances out, and they're all very whole numbers. But it does feel like a bit, <laughs> a bit of work at this point. We'll see. I mean, you know, I'll take out the armor peats, they're all good. Uh, other than that, not a ton has really been going on. I've actually been taking a pretty chill... Uh, I don't know why, I just keep, like, dancing around going, Oh, do I need to use my healing? Oh, I guess I might as well. I'm just standing outside the town, I'll just go in when I need to. Um, yeah, not a lot's really been happening. I've sort of been clearing off a few games, uh, a couple of which I played and I'm not gonna mention, because I wanna play them on stream. That's how you know they're good. Um, I've actually got, like, a good catalog of games I actually do want to give a, another go, and, like, some franchises as well, so I can come back to them a bit later. Um, although, here I am playing Dragon Quest 2, knowing full well that we've got, uh, 8 or 9, depending on whether the Dragon Quest 10 ever becomes available in English. We'll see. Probably not, but, uh... Plenty of other Dragon Quests to play, and uh, plenty of other RPGs to play, which will take me forever, so don't worry about that. Yeah, 70 gold, very nice. Yeah, other than that, I, I feel like the world of the gaming industry is sort of in this weird, um, state. Oh, there was one, I did, uh, I'll mention this one. I got Dark Sword again. I bought The Crew, uh, late last year. The Crew, as of April 1st, is now unavailable to purchase, and the servers have been taken down. With the servers taken down, the game refuses to start. You know, I mean, you can run the program and then it tells you, can't connect to the server, sorry, see ya. And it just won't play. All that work, all that work that devs put into this game, gone. I can't play it. I own it, I can't play it. I'm very upset, because as a, as a proud Dark Spore owner, I have a physical disc, you know, with a box and everything, that just doesn't mean anything. It's for a game that you cannot play. And it's because it purely relies on someone else's service that isn't there. The crew is in the same boat, except I have a digital copy. I don't have a, a box copy. But I think the... My my sentiment is still the same, which is I'm very upset. I'm... 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 I, this really hurts because... And I know it's like, well, why would you buy it if you, if you didn't play it? And it's like, I didn't expect to not have access to it in six months. Whoa, we got a couple of enemies going on here. Uh, how about, let's take out the Wiz Dracky first, because... The Armor Pete's probably not going to be too bad. I think the Wiz Dracky can do some funky stuff. Feed out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, too, too bad Prince of Canic can't hit hard. Oh, you gotta be really? Oh, okay. It worked out. It was okay. There you go, we got there in the end. Uh, does he have enough for- yeah, he's got enough for an though. Let's do a heal after this, even though I'm a little bit off for the, uh, for the armor. I'll just keep grinding for a little bit. I 
much grinding I did in the first game, but given that it ended up being three streams, that sort of works out. I was expecting four streams on this one. That's that's my prediction. Um, but we'll see. We'll see, because, uh... Like, I'll probably try to get the... You know, the third character before the end of this stream. Um, because we're really close. Like, I know we're just hitting two hours now on stream, but, uh... No, we're really close. We're really close. And this is when final... Final famous last words. Um, oh, also, I hope Daylight Savings isn't uh, kicking in with weird times. I know, uh, chat's been a bit quiet, and I know sometimes it's... Sometimes it's like that, you all know how it is. Um, but, uh... Yeah, because, uh, because streaming an hour later, so I think maybe for some people they would have been like, Oh, I got a bit of it early, so... It's always like that. Prince of Kanek really needs to be able to deal more than one damage to these guys. They do give some good money, I'll tell you that. I don't think anyone else has anywhere near as much money nearby. I know the, the baboons do. Oh, this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a doozy. Also, uh, this is something to note, because uh, you might be going, how come some enemies you hit for 19 and they died, and some enemies, they don't. There's a little bit of variance in the amount of health that enemies actually have. So, there's a... If you're ever on, like, the strategy wiki page and it describes, like, how much health the enemies have, that's the maximum. Sometimes it can be, like, 80% of that. It is just random, but it's always at least under that number. And it gives you a little bit of, you know, hey, you know, the enemies aren't, aren't perfect. Let's get that armor, because uh, that'll save me a bit. And we can sell the current armor as well. Go the steel chest. Who gets it? Well, <laughs> not the person who can't equip it. And now I can sell whatever I was wearing before. A leather guard. There you go. One step closer to the next bit. All right, now now we're in this serious fight again. Hopefully it's not too bad, like, if you see them hit Bundo, you might see them not hit as hard. Or they just miss. Or- Whoa. <laughs> I'm feeling good. I mean, I did just double my defense, so maybe that, maybe that seems a bit gnarly. Too bad I can't do anything similar for, for the Prince of Canic. It's like, what else can he equip? There's only, they, for reference as well, um... Uh, yeah, helmets don't come until later. Um, yeah, that steel shield he can't use, so... And he's got a new spell, Stop Spell! Now I can stop spells. It comes in use sometimes. I feel like for these very small enemies where they die very quick, it's like... Uh, they die very quick, what's the point? Um... I think for the most part, the Prince of Canic can actually equip almost all the armor, though. Almost. But not all. Every single piece of equipment can be worn by the main character, though. So. If you ever want someone to always be your main, just, just give it to him. Even the staffs. Even, like, weapons that you'd, you'd imagine he wouldn't be able to use. He can! He can use everything! Can't do any spells though, but you can equip them. And actually, if the because um this game has the oh did the previous did the first game have any items that were like this? I don't think it did. Where it's like they are weapons, but if you're on the um if you're on the uh the item screen, you can see your equipment in here. And sometimes the equipment actually you can use it and it casts a spell. So you can actually kind of get away with that with your main character if you want to start dropping some spells. It's a it's a little fun strategy there. Oh, the wooden pole. My favorite. Oh my gosh. I did not do my uh, my bottled water before stream. I was feeling kind of like, eh. I had a big dinner. 
I don't know, but we'll, we'll do okay. And I, I'm just like, yep, I'm feeling the, the thirsty mouth, but I'm gonna rock it. We're two hours in, we're pretty good. Oh, we got three, three, four, yeah. I guess the question is, what am I waiting for? I mean, I know those baboons are gonna kick my butt, but they're gonna kick my butt anyways. Like, we might as well just run in for it. They're not gonna kick the, uh... Prince Maidenhall. He's not gonna, not gonna kick his butt yet. We'll do a save, just in case. Because we don't need to go too far. Really our goal is we want to get to the, um, to the castle. The castle is just kind of down here and then very west for a bit. But we're probably going to come across, you know, you know, the baboons. Uh, might as well get him with the fireball. He's got enough magic that he can probably do it for a bit. There you go. I'm glad they're just going for art. They're just going for him. Uh, might as well heal, because he's gonna need it. Mm, they kinda hit hard anyways. I think it'll be good to, to start to actually fight these guys though. We're gonna need we're gonna need to do it at some point, so why not now? They do hit hard, but look at that! 99 experience points, which was enough for a level for Bundo, and I'm pretty sure it's like one away for, for Art. Uh, and they dropped a club, and they do drop a fair bit of money. 135 is sort of worth it. It is, it is pretty worth it. Uh, I used a bit of magic. Whoops, sorry. Blah, blah. I used a bit of magic, but as long as we can... I've got the, the warp wing as well. We do have a bail if we really need it. And it's not, like, too far away. The castle is, uh, just here. There we go. You're gonna need a cop... Two hits, though. Two... well, <laughs> more than two hits. The whole castle's sort of... surrounded in, like, poop. And we got zombies as well, because why not? Zombie B! I don't think the zombies hit too hard, but uh, them using surround is just gonna kinda get annoying, isn't it? Because now I'm just gonna miss all the time. Oh my gosh, how much health do the zombies have? Oh, it's 60! Oh, jeez. Well, they don't hit too hard, but uh, four of them is uh, a fair bit. It's a fair bit of going. Uh, so yeah, I think surround just means you miss quite more often, um, but it does mean, hey, if I want to heal, that's fine. It needs to be hitting anyway, so that's okay. I think it's also only temporary for the fight, and he might snap out of it at some point. I'm not sure if he does. Look at all zombies, uh, my favorite, just, like, uh, were there zombies in the first game? Maybe. Uh, here's something as well, Dragon Quest 2 is available, Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3 are all available on the Switch. Not in Australia, I don't know why the Australian eShop doesn't have them. The British one does, they've been localized, they're in English, uh, so there is some way to actually play Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3 these days. Um, I do wish 4, 5, and 6 got some kind of re-release, but, hey, you know. We'll get there. I am the soul of Moonbrook's king. My daughter Nana was turned into a dog by a curse. The shame of it. Man, where have we seen a dog? Time to steal thing. Oh, time to steal things. Oh, come on, man. East of here lies a small swamp within sight of two bridges. The La Mirror is there. I cannot die until I pass that on. Uh, 
a bit too late, man, but sure. I love this, like, outside part, because it's like, it makes you think that there's, like, something going on, but it's not at all. It's just here. I'm pretty- is there one other- oh my gosh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna cast fire on the smoke. I don't know if that works. No, it doesn't. Fire on the smoke does not work. And then he stopped my spell. That's gonna- that's gonna be a little annoying. I'm gonna need to rely on a antidote item, I guess. I believe the smoke is actually, like, really good for... It's really good for gold. I think it's 40 gold, and it's not that strong. I could probably beat the zombie before I even need to use the items. Yeah, I could probably just kick his butt first. There we go. Very nice. And I hit the wrong button again. <laughs> it's doing so well, and then I just instinctively go start button. Although that's kind of nice that you do get to quick save wherever, but... You jerk! You jerk! I'm walking this way. <sighs> Can't even open that gate. I'll never know what's on the other side. This is just- I- I just don't want to deal with this fight, man. Not- not this many enemies. This feels kind of cool. Hey, you're not gonna let me? You're not gonna let me run away from this one? The- the one time I want to, like, actually run away and it's like, yep, nope. Can't do it. The worst part as well, I actually realized the uh, the error of my way. So hold on, we'll go back out here. Alright, I can deal with three zombies. Yeah, hopefully I get some levels off these guys, this would be nice. The music is still a vibe. I like it. Man, we lost the composer like a couple of years ago as well. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be weird in your Dragon Quest when it's just like how much of the because I mean it is an old franchise. It's nearing forty years old. It's in video game terms that's that's really a long time. To, especially for a franchise that stays so traditional. It barely, you know, sways from these original roots. So I believe if we go, ooh, 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 there we go. If you cop it all the way down here, you can manage to get into the little underground part. Oh, there's a guy just chilling here. Hi. Ooh, princess, I failed to protect the princess, cursed and transformed. She was exiled to a town somewhere. If only I, the law mirror, said to show only the truth should break the curse. Please save the princess. And then he dies. And then he proceeds to say the thing pretty cleanly. The worst part is coming here exclusively for info. <laughs> it's like I didn't even leave with a... With a, uh... With an item. Now all I'm hoping is that I've got just enough gusto to make it to, you know, where I need to go. Because, uh, we don't have a lot of, like, actual ground to... Oh, sorry, we don't... There's not a lot of enemies that need to be fought, still. But I don't have a lot of magic either, so I'm like, ugh. The zombie- was the guy Zombie Joe? 
He likes the turtles? It's, it wasn't Joe, was it? It was something else. Zombie Bob? Did imagine, like, dying to monsters and then, like, half of you become zombies and the other half just become, like, fire? Spooky dead castle, given that the other places were pretty fine. Okay, let's just burn through some herbs, shall we? Actually, I think I should be okay with just the one for now. 59? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're okay for one. How can I get out of here, though? Uh, let's see. Let's hit the smoke first. Before he does anything too funky. I don't want to deal with it. I am kind of digging this game, though. I was expecting to, like, feel, you know, a bit of the, the crust, but it's not too bad. This is still a little bit of, like, you know, oh, uh, how, how much, how strong do you need to be in order to continue, but you can sort of, like, test the waters a little bit and feel it, just like the original game. The original game is very much like that. Um, and, yeah, the multiple party members doesn't feel, like, weird right now. And, and, and I know, because it's like, well, how much does the party strategy really change in later Dragon Quest? And the answer is, not a lot. This game, I think, there were certainly party-based games before. The original Dragon Quest is sort of a bit odd, because there is no party. It's just you and the world. Um, but I feel like it works okay, because there's, like, clearly defined roles for your party members. Uh, okay, so now we're out of here. Now all we gotta do is just travel directly east. Just straight east. You're gonna encounter, you know, like this, lizard fly. Darn lizard fly, you know. They're not that bad. They're, they're really not that bad. They're actually really rich for experience as well. That's, they've got 27 experience each, for some reason. Uh, but yeah, if we keep going east a bit, we should see... There we go. Bridge. Bridge. Well, this is gonna be a weird fight, isn't it? I still can't one-hit the healers. Or the heal slimes, rather. I'll sometimes just call them their, like, later game names. Like, these are clearly just heal slimes, but, uh... Zombies are zombies, or uh, sometimes they got they got other weird names. They're usually still zombies. They keep it pretty pure. There's gonna be some enemies that you won't see in this game as well, like the chimeras. I don't think actually appear in this one. What the golems? Mostly new enemies. There we go. Oh, oh. Okay, we're good. We're good. And we get a crit, just, just to top them off. So here we go. Now, if you head over to this poopy swamp and check here, you'll find the La Mirror. It's here. You just had to pick up on that line of dialogue before. Someone mentioned the bridges. That's where you need to go. Now, we gotta return. We gotta do the return trip. Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, do I do, uh, let's get with the whiz trackies first. I don't trust them. The Wiz Drackies don't have a lot of health, but uh Oh boy, do they uh do they wallop. And these guys cast spells, so they're just inherently mean. This is gonna be great on the experience though, I'll tell you that. Yeah, look at that, 105. Woo. I can nearly afford, nearly. This will be famous last words otherwise. Um, and this is the la- oh, that- nope, I'm very out of magic. Okay, we're going for the herbs. Alright, time to somehow make it out of here safely. 
Ah, ants! The worst kind of ants. Magic ants. They're not too bad, but again... Oh. Oh, that's not fun. That's not fun. At least they're not combined with other enemies. You know? Like, one of them, one of them being mean and the other one putting me to sleep. Alright, so, heading back west again. Oh my god, oh, and they suddenly attack. Oh, that's just cruel. We could probably just kick their butts, though. Alright, that's one down. Come on, come on. There we go. Easy money. Easy, or rather, easy experience. Look at that. Ooh. Level 10 already. Not a ton of stat points off that one, though. Uh, do I need to heal? Oh, I'm gonna wing it for a little bit. I mean, if I die, you know what happens, so... Uh... This is gonna be a little awkward, because this is, this is the only spell I can cast. So I need to get rid of the magic ant, because that's going to be mean. They're probably not too bad, the armor peats now. Uh, after a few level ups, but uh... Again... Prince of Canic can't do anything here. He's just uh... <laughs> he's kind of just copping it. There we go, defeated him. I'm just gonna like ride north a little bit and just so we could be in the grass. Oh, I gotta deal with the baboons. Uh, just just beat them up. All right, well, one down. I mean, I'm faster than them. They all seem to attack after me, so. Oh. This is this is why I've been picking up all those all those herbs for a time like this. There we go. So let's let's okay. This is the last herb I've got is chilling here. Remind me to buy some more the moment I get back. There we go. Got a bit of a bit more health for the final final stretch. I like how I died like first go, like right at the beginning. And then it's like, oh, it's been pretty alright. Oh, I didn't even need it. Okay. So here we are. Let's go into town. Now, you, I mean, it's, it's not even a mystery. You know exactly what's going on here. Walk up to the dog. Uh, go into, uh... The items. Yeah, the, the items. You wanna use the la mirror. Peered into the la mirror. In the mirror, a beautiful princess was reflected. The mirror shattered, and the curse was lifted. Oh, it's so good to regain myself. I thought I was doomed to remain a dog forever. My name is Nana. The Princess of Moonbrook. Which is what I usually call her anyways. I imagine you already know. But Moonbrook Castle was attacked by Hagen's army. I was turned into a dog by a curse. Then they exiled me here. I can't imagine what happened to Moonbrook Castle. No, I won't think about that now. Please let me join your quest. Let's fight evil together. And here we are. Here's our third character. We are all... In the party. This is now our party. That's it. That's the three characters. The Prince of uh, Mindenhall, the Prince of Canic, and the Princess of Moonbrook. Who don't really have names, but they've casually named him uh, Art and Nana, and I don't know what the main character's name is. Maybe Lotto again, I don't know. You know what that means? The inn's expensive again. So we got a bit of a journey to go to, uh, but I think we'll, uh, we'll just check what items, and, I, and maybe I'll buy the, the healing items again. Alright, so first of all, I have been holding on to extra equipment that I don't know if I'd actually use, so how about let's double check whether she can equip that for now, just to, just to see. 
I guess she's already holding on to that club. I don't have anything else that's really worthwhile there. Okay, so equipment, Nana, club. No, she can't use the club. She's not very good. <laughs> May I just add, she, she really, well, she is good. Everyone's good in their own way. I actually found in the original NES game, the Prince of Kanek would often be the one to kind of cop it for me. Alright, so let's give uh, two of them the art, which I have to buy one at a time. It takes its time. And two to Nana. Everyone's got their own inventory space, so the whole problems of the first game of, like, you barely got any inventory to ho hold anything. It's not as bad in this one, because everyone has their own space, and that's a trend that's sort of in every Dragon Quest. Uh, so let's go to Nana, who's holding on to the loose items, and we don't need the wooden clo wooden stick, which is very, very small. Uh, in fact... Yeah, no, there's nothing for her. <laughs> Just flat out, no use. Nothing. Uh... I really actually, I do want the Steel Sword, because uh, the defense gain from this, probably don't need it that much. And, uh... I mean, I could use the spear, but I could get the spear later. How about let's grind up a little bit. Oh wait, hold on. I'm holding on to the other <laughs> weapon as well, which is not going to be worth enough. Oh. Whoops. You don't need the club. $45. Alright. So we'll just make a little bit of money. We'll show Princessa, which is her name in some of the other pieces of media. I like the different music as your party gains in size as well. These guys aren't supposed to be this high, are they? Nice. I mean, Nana's got nothing. She's got absolutely nothing. She's gonna cop some hits. She's here purely to gain experience for a hot moment. Because, uh, like... Yeah, and, <laughs> How many other RPGs are it where it's just like, yeah, this character just... doesn't get anything. For a moment. She'll... I think she'll... she'll be acquainted very soon with something, but... Yeah, for the hot moment... nothing. Uh, on top of that, I think her stats... She's actually... She she benefits from being super fast. She's actually, like, really fast right off the bat. Yeah, there's a zombie already here. So she's already got, like, I think, 22 agility. There you go, one damage. Um, on top of that as well, what spells does she have? She's, she comes with heal more. So, for 5 magic, you can heal, like... 50 health? I think it's 50, which is sort of overkill right now. And then they gave her more agility and the sleep ability. So... She ends up kind of being the healer, but... Yeah, at least to start off, it's a very curious start, because it's like... She's too good in, in the spells right now, and not good in the attacking at all. Like, she's gonna... Here she goes! One damage! Woo! And then I proceed to take magic damage anyway, so... Um, but she'll be interesting to play with, but... Yeah! The whole journey of, you know, an RPG and acquiring all your characters... Well, here you go, first stream. You're welcome. Uh, ah, oh, still not enough for the... For the, <laughs> for the sword, for the thing. And then the rest of the journey is, uh, finding the villain. We gotta find him, we gotta stop him. You know how it goes. There we go. And a uh, poison again. Poisoned again. They do hit Nana kind of hard though, but she'll get there. Does she gain any? She gains a little bit of strength over time. Also, as a, as a little fun fact, uh, oh, sh leather! Heck yeah! I didn't even check as well, hold on, the, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to her, I guess. And then, uh, give me the antidote. She can't equip the leather, can she? Oh, she can! Very, well, no, she can't. 
I, I, I just saw her in there. I was like, oh, she can't. No. Alright, well, we'll sell that off. I'm pretty sure, hold on, just before I, before I go nuts. Because there was the item shop, and the item shop had some weapons in it as well. Oh, yeah, she's not, she's not completely useless. Hold on, she can hold a knife. That at least will give us something for the moment. Now I can... Whoops. Whoops. Now I can sell the, uh, the leather. Which just puts me a little bit under as well, so... Another fight! Another fight! Hopefully she'll be a bit better with the knife. Just a little bit better. I don't think it really puts her, like, too strong right now, but... It might mean she actually might do a little... Oh, she might do a little bit of damage on these armor peeds. We'll see. I mean, they're already pretty armored anyways. One damage. One damage, baby! And then meanwhile, Bindo comes here with a crit. 46! Yeah, that's definitely enough. Okay, finally! The time has come to purchase a strong weapon! The steel. I shall equip it. I shall sell. Actually, I'm not gonna sell, I'm gonna pass it on. Right? Actually, hold on, what? What? Hold on. <laughs> I was holding on to the sickle, and if I go into the buy menu. Art already has a sickle. He doesn't. He doesn't need it. So never mind. I was like, oh, does he need it? No. So there you go. I can sell the sickle. Two hundred forty-seven gold. That's a pretty good turnaround rate, given that I was like bludgeoning some zombies with it. I don't know. You think you think it maybe be like, it's a bit icky. Needs a wash. But nah. It's all fine. It's all good. <laughs> so there we go. Good morning. Have a nice day. It is not the morning yet, it is 11 p.m. here in local Sydney time. And, uh... We're gonna talk to the back alley guy to save. Here we go. Life keeps getting more convenient. Man, it's got some quick level ups though, because, uh... You know, early experience. Uh, no, we're good. Take all the rest you need. Then though, I will await your return. And there we go, we're out. So, with that, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed the stream or uh, you missed parts of it, uh, you can follow on Twitch or subscribe on YouTube where you'll see the VODs. Uh, follow on Twitch, you'll see another stream, 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. We are now on Standard Time, plus 10 UTC. Um, pretty much every Monday, so from, from here until the end of time or until another holiday break. Um, but yeah, no, you can, you can follow there. And yeah, if you miss parts of this on Twitch, you can watch on YouTube, uh, as well as every single VOD, like every single one of them for the past like, handful of years, uh, as well as all the old YouTube stuff, if you're really curious. Um, but yeah, you can also follow me on Ploroma, m.bnd.com, where I say some stupid things from time to time. I did not talk about Ruby Gilman, though. That was a bit recent. I don't know. I was formulating all that in my head, so. Anyways, stay, <laughs> stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late. And, uh, give this game a go. I don't know. Play along with me. It seems cool. I like it. I'm liking it. It's good fun. So, anyways, peace, everyone.